I was writing a script the other day and needed to have the script compare two directories to see if there's any differences. One restriction I placed on myself is that I didn't want to write out intermediary files because those are going to be large and take a lot of time. And I thought that I could use some piping magic to accomplish what I needed, but nope. I had to use a different method because I needed two different input streams which pipes don't provide. And that's where process substitution came into play. Let's take a step back and review the pipe construct. Piping is essentially taking the output of the first command and then feeding it as the input to the second command. In a very simple example, I'm going to run the hostname command and then I want the output to be fed into the program md5sum. And you see that after the execution of this command, we get the md5 hash of the output of the hostname command. And note that if you are following along, your output will look different unless your hostname just happens to be Kane. One other thing to note here is that you will see this dash, which tells us the md5 sum command read its input from standard in as opposed to an actual file, right? Because if we use an actual file, you would actually see that file name in that spot. And that's the pipe construct, which works great, except when I need two different inputs to a third program. Now let's take a look at what a process substitution looks like you are essentially telling the command line to execute command 1 and then use that output as the input to command 2. So it sounds very familiar to the pipe construct that we just talked about. And it looks like this. Note that there is no space between the less than symbol and the open parentheses. Otherwise you'll get an error like number expected if you're running Z shell or syntax error near unexpected token if you're running bash shell. An example of doing this is if I do md5 sum and I do the less than open parentheses, host name, end parentheses. Notice that even though the hash is the same, which it should be, the second part of the output is slightly different. When we did the pipe, there was the dash indicating that the input was from standard in. In the process substitution case, we actually have a file name which in this case is slash dev slash fd slash 63. So essentially within the process substitution, the command line interpreter will execute command one and then write the result to a temporary file in slash dev slash fd with the file name as a random number and then use that file as input to command two. The file is ephemeral though as it will disappear once it has been used. So if we do an ls of slash dev slash fd, we will only see the standard file descriptors of 0, 1, 2, 3, but not number 63. So back to my script, what I'm trying to do is to compare the file listing of two folders to see what files have changed and then when. Since I'm using the diff command, the pipe construct won't work because you can only pipe from one program to another. You can't pipe two things. And because I need to have two inputs into one program, here is where process substitution comes in. In the example before, when I used process substitution, I had one input. Now I need two inputs, so it's just as simple as doing it twice. The command line interpreter will run command one, and then command two, and then use them as the two inputs to command three. So in my case, I will run ls-l on the first directory and then run ls-l on the second directory and then use them both as the inputs to the diff command. And the output shows me that I have one file named front.html which has a different size and a different last change date. Note that I could run each of the ls commands and then write the output to a file and then diff the two different files. But that means I have to track to the two individual files and then delete them afterwards. And that's not really hard to do, but I just want to make things simpler. And that's why I use process substitution. We talked about using process substitution as inputs to the programs, but they can also be used as outputs, just as easily by flipping the less than symbol to a greater than symbol. So for example, if I have a folder and I want to know the MD5 sum of the tar of that folder, 
This is the process I would use if I want to run it in multiple steps. I would first do a tar-cf to create a tarball, naming the output file tarball.tar, and then all the stuff I want to put into the tarball, which is the folder r1. And once that's done running, I can just do md5 sum of the tarball. And then I get that uh, MD5 hash. And when I'm done, I have to remove that tarball, right? Because I don't need it for any purpose except for the hash. So, you know, that's fine. It's a three-step process. But here is what it would look like if we use process substitution. And we can do this in one line. So we need to do tar-cf greater than open parentheses MD5 sum. And then ending parentheses and then R1. So this command is going to create a tarball from the input directory named R1. But because we are using process substitution, instead of writing the tar data to a file, we will just send it directly to the program of MD5SUM. I have essentially used process substitution to avoid having to create an actual tarball file and then running the MD5SUM command on it and then deleting it. This is all in just one clean step. Another construct that you may often hear about, which is similar, but not really, is the command substitution. What it looks like is this. You have a command, space, dollar, open parentheses, another command, and then the end parentheses. The obvious visual difference being that it uses the dollar symbol instead of the greater than or less than. But the real difference is that in usage, the command substitution is meant to provide some data as the argument to command 2. So for example, if I type echo today's day of the week is, and then I do the command substitution of dollar open parentheses date plus double quote percent capital A double quote end parentheses. The command substitution has provided some data, in this case the day of the week, as an argument to the echo command. All right, so that's why the output is going to be today's day of the week is Saturday. This is different than process substitution, which is providing a temporary file name as its output. So that's process substitution in a nutshell. We have seen that in the most basic form, process substitution is similar to the pipe except that it will create a temporary file and then use that file and then remove it. The advantages of using process substitution include simple inline commands that won't need temporary files to be created and tracked by the user. The performance improvement of not having to write to disk and then read from disk is also very nice. And lastly, when running process substitution, the processes are run concurrently instead of sequentially, thereby improving performance. I know that you will enjoy another Linux video like this one here. Leave a comment below and make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.